Welcome to this episode of the Wireless Weekly, episode 69, post-iPhone 5S, 5C event impressions, and I guess some other stuff. Uh, we're recording on September 10th, 2013. Uh, the show is brought to you by audible.com. Get your free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. This is the show where we talk about mobile tech news, updates, and innovations. I'm Tony Hannity's. I'm Radford Castro. And I am Victor Bognat. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Uh, for all of you out there watching live or recorded, however you uh, get your podcast, welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, mostly Apple, because they had two fairly large announcements earlier on today. But before we go ahead and do that, I do want to let you guys know how to get in contact with us. So we are the Lazy Tech Guys from LazyTechGuys.com. You can call us at 707-722-5299 if you have any questions, comments, concerns, emotional outbursts, any of those, or email us at comments at LazyTechGuys.com. So first and foremost, um, we're going to be talking about... Um, obviously the iPhone 5C that was made official as well as the iPhone 5S. Some of the really cool features uh, in the 5S like the Touch ID, uh, the M7 coprocessor, uh, some new hardware cases uh, we're going to be talking about, um, you know, how this impacts the overall um, the iOS or iDevice Portfolio. I mean, are they cannibalizing themselves by doing this? Um, also, if we have time, there's some other uh, news regarding um, hardware from Asus, HTC, but uh, that's probably going to be a lot of Apple stuff. But before we go ahead, go on and do that, um, let's first thank our sponsors, Audible.com. So for you uh, listeners, viewers, and readers, of the uh, of Lazy Tech Guys and the Wireless Weekly, Audible is offering you guys one heck of a trial. So if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy, you will have an array of over 150,000 audiobooks to choose from. These are books either read by professional readers or the authors themselves, and the books range in genres from nonfiction to fiction, biography to autobiography, from tech to fantasy to uh, really fantasy, like Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, but, you know, whatever you're into, if you've ever, never had a chance to actually sit down and read those books, this is one of the best ways to do it and still find yourself immersed in the literature. So uh, Audible also offers free downloads for mobile apps from iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. So once again, if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy, um, make sure you use that URL, letting... Uh, letting Audible know that you heard it first from the Lazy Tech Guys um, helps us out. They'll help you out. You get 30 day trial. You get a free book out of the deal. That's the big hoopla right there. A free book valued at anywhere between $10 to $40. And even if you don't want to keep the service, you get to keep the book afterwards. So I'd like to thank audible.com, Amazon.com for being sponsors of the Wireless Weekly and the LTG Network. All right, so let's go ahead and start off first with the iPhone 5C. Now, we were all speculating that the C stood for cheap or cruddy or something or other, but, or, you know, even colors was, a, was, uh, was on our, the, tip of our, uh, the tip of our tongue, so to speak. But today, we found out that we don't know what the C stands for. Probably it is colors, because there are actually five colors. We got white, pink, yellow, blue, and green. They come in two capacities, 16 gig and um, 32 gig, so no 64 gig for this one. Um, and at a two-year price of 99 or 199 comparative. Um, in terms of the actual hardware themselves compared to the existing iPhone 5, not much different there, except for it is a poly carbonate that feels very, um, according to Miriam from the Engadget when I, I was watching her hands-on video, um, it's very well built. It's not like a cheap plastic that, you know, uh, that, that people have thought that it looked like in the, those really uh, ugly looking photographs. It's a very uh, well built phone that's um, reinforced with steel on the inside. Uh, and then everything else is pretty much the same. It's got the A6 chip. It, it's going to be available for all the, all the carriers in the United States. Um, and I'd say one of the other updates to this is the front-facing camera is now like um, optimized for FaceTime HD. So um, now when I was talking about cannibalism, 
this phone basically is taking the place of the iPhone 5. Like as of, I think now, or as of September 20th when this goes on mm-hmm. sale, mm-hmm. there's no more iPhone 5. You can't go in the store and say, I want an, I want a, a black iPhone 5 or a white mm-hmm. iPhone 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to get one of these or get the iPhone 5S. Um, is, that a, is that a good thing for Apple? I mean, it, the, are they losing a lot of money with all the iPhone 5s that they've built up until now? Like are they going to, are they going to, um, I was talking to Vic pre-show. Like, what are they going to do with all the iPhone fives? Are they going to reassemble them into the iPhone five C? What do you think, Red? Uh, so we had a good discussion. I got, I had a good discussion with this, uh, with a, with a business guy, who uh, um, supposedly works with uh, the top carriers and actually deals with Apple. And uh, the biggest problem is that um, the reason why they're replacing it is because of the fact that it, co- it costs more money to lower the price of the five. Of iPhone 5 than it is to replace it with another phone that has an incremental upgrade. So uh, the other thing too is that they didn't want to uh, they didn't want to appear that they were going to cheapen its price and therefore, which makes it surprising that they kept the you know the 4s in the lineup. But now it's less surprising after hearing what he had to say, which makes complete sense. So it really it's it it comes down to you know um, uh, not losing as much money. Uh, with the iPhone 5 when you drop the price. They would rather sell, replace it with another iPhone that is almost similar in structure and, uh, you know, manufactured, and so you're you're still cutting costs rather than, you know, you, you, they spent... It's sort of like, you know, if you spent $150 to build the iPhone 5 or, or 200 or whatever, to lower it another $100 is, is, is prices that they, they shouldn't have to lower anymore. You are, I mean? so are the dimensions the same? Yeah, yeah, the dimensions the same. Yeah. So you can somebody who has an iPhone five right now can just pop off the case that they have on that and put it on the five C. Yeah. Yeah. To a certain degree, the um, yeah. the the five S physically more resembles the five. The five C is a little bit more curved because the actual um, rear of the polycarbonate is machined a little bit differently than the the five and the five S, but the innards are the same. Well, I guess, like, to what we were talking about earlier, Tony, like how when we said um, they would still offer the 4S, right? Right, and the 4S... Because because they probably have a lot still in stock or whatever. Right. Honestly, to what Rad was saying, this makes sense in, in a few ways in that, like, say, all those parts that they ordered for the 5... They still can use with this, right? But mm-hmm. they can still say they have a new product. Yes. Which, like, the 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 fever of like all the news leading up to this day, like this announcement, like you know, for oh, what are they going to announce and all that stuff? Oh, it's going to be a iPhone with with multiple colors and like just the fact that it had different colors, but it could be the same phone inside. That it, it's they can say it's a new product, right? So. Well, it's but, it's uh, like yeah. Do you yeah, think it's... any other company can get away with that? Like it, like I, I don't know if I if I um, whenever Samsung reveals like the Galaxy S4 in a new color, they don't make a whole press announcement like a, with a big event. They're just like, oh, by the way, here's a new color. Here's a here's like two advertisements for it. And no, it's really it'll... simple. It's so Apple decided to discontinue the iPhone 5 because. The 5C fills the price point that would have been occupied by a discounted iPhone 5, right? Mm. Right. So, like, the ancient iPhone 4, which was, what, discontinued too, but, you know, surprisingly, the company is going to still sell the, the iPhone 4S. That's the surprise for me. So, I mean, it'll be sold for no upfront cost on the tier contract, but it's also possible that the iPhone 5 is just too expensive for a product to, for you know, for a company to drop the price significantly. But when you have a 5C, there, there's just... There's just less space for older devices. You know what I mean? So it's like when you have a new device that's very similar to the iPhone 5 internally, it just doesn't make sense to kind of like, oh, let's just drop the price on here when the initial cost for it was so expensive at the time when they released it. You know what I mean? Well, it also goes to the, um, what, what, what do you call it, like the price perception or, or value, no, no, it's a, the value perception, right? Yes, that's oh. number two, yeah. So that's absolutely correct. There's it's that that thing and the other thing I was talking about, and those combine for 
you know, like, oh, wow, you know, there's a color scheme and we have these things and, you know, when you have that, it's basically like refreshing the lineup, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's in the same way Nintendo does the same thing with the 2DS, right? So it's like, you know, like, hey, you know, this is going to be releasing at a price point and at that time, of course, when you're manufacturing with the same chips, the chips become more cheaper. So, right. you know, Tim Cook understands this. Like, he's an operations guy, so he knows, like, you know, hey, this is... It's like super cheaper now to to do the A6 chip because the A7 is now out. So all of a sudden the A6 chips are like super cheap. So of course it doesn't make sense because they spent so much money on A6 like a year ago, right? And but so why should they drop a price on that, those phones when they could just release the 5C with you know cheaper versions of the A6? Does that make sense? Yeah. So well, it's like it's like essentially it's a good way to still keep. Using your your surplus or absolutely the parts absolutely. and stuff. So. Absolutely. absolutely. Do you think it was um, the tech community's own fault for uh, thinking that this was going to be the low cost option? Because it really isn't the low cost option, especially at the full retail price of five hundred and fifty bucks. It's you know we, we yesterday on, on the LTG show we were saying if if it's going to be a three hundred dollar phone without subsidy, then they have definitely hit the low cost option. But this is still far from that. Yeah. But with that, that was our as a press, as the tech pundit, that was our kind of perception of this is a plasticky iPhone, you know. And then even Joni Ives said, you know, we're unapologetically plastic. You know, it's plastic, but it's beautiful plastic. Whereas, yeah. you know, if you look at, you know, other plastic Android devices, you know. Um, even some Windows Phone devices, like, eh, that doesn't really look really nice. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's up for debate. But the whole point really is it's clear now that Apple wants to be a high-end company. So it's really clear that they're not going to try to... Like, it almost seems like it would be almost against their identity to kind of release a cheap product. That's why it would totally surprise me if they did that because they would, they would clearly sell so many because simply because of the iOS, uh, the iOS app store. So, but, but well, this is essentially they're playing in the space of the S four with this. You mean the four S or no, the Galaxy S four, right? I think... Or the S three. I mean, they're going after all they're, of them. They're going after all of them. I I, I, I I created a comparison chart in my head between that and the Nokia uh, nine twenty, just because mm. like you could have different colors. Mm -hmm. Color schemes, mm -hmm. yep. and you know, th I think the the Nokia 920 has a better screen. It's a little bit bigger, um, but then it comes down to you know the operating system, and th there your um, debate is going to be between iOS 7, which we still don't really know fully because I'm sure there's going to be some other releases between now and September 18th, um, mm -hmm. and then you know Windows Phone 8. That's all. That's always going to be that debate. But hardware-wise, I think the I th personally I think the Nokia uh, 920 is a little bit better made. But um, you know, I, I think this is a, this was a good move for Apple there because they're like you said they're going to take their surplus and they're going to reapply and, and um, you know like have a in a sense a brand new product. The one thing that came out of this the announcement though regarding the iPhone 5C was um, the cases. Mm -hmm. with these cheese-grated uh, Connect 4 Swiss cheese-looking cases that yeah, allow you Connect to Connect 4 is probably the best description. Kind of mix and match. So you have, you right. have like, what? You, you have a yellow case or uh, a yellow phone, and then you can max it, uh, match it with a black case. Or whatever. Right. I don't know. It just looked really weird. Uh, 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 Vic, in, really, the list, yeah. in, in the list of, yeah, in the list of uh, articles that we have here, I, I found a picture of it so we can kind of, at least I thought I had pictures. Um, to kind of show the people that are watching if they haven't seen seen this th these uh, cases yet. Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got, I got it. it. <laughs> so they're going to be twenty nine nine twenty nine ninety nine. I'm sure. So there you go. Um, and uh, yeah, they just have this kind of yeah this Connect Four esque kind of feel to it. And I I guess I understand you know. You're gonna get a phone that's no longer just black or white, and Apple wants to, wants to allow you to show off your choice of color. Um, but you still, to a certain degree, you know, most people still want to have some sort of case, but you don't want to completely cover the back. 
And instead of having a case that has a colored bumper and a clear back, you have a colored everything, but then these little holes. And uh, Maybe design... there's a heat thing. <laughs> I don't know. Design-wise, it was odd because um, Chris uh, Chavez from Fandroid.com also noticed that you know when you have these have this case covering the iPhone, um, the iPhone logo kind of peaks really poorly through the holes, and from a design standpoint, it doesn't look very crisp. It looks kind of shoddy. And I was like, huh, that's that's an interesting point. I mean, not saying all Android accessories are great either, but, you know, it's from Apple, they pride themselves on design everywhere from the font to cases and phones. And it was just interesting that, you know, Joni would, you know, let that pass if, if he had anything to do with the cases. But It's um, funny, you looked at it that way because I looked at it differently. Oh, so I actually looked at it as uh, just more, like, a variety of color scheme combinations. That's how I saw it. Like, uh, like Sarah was, she's like, I don't know if I like it. I kind of like it, but I don't know if I do. And part, of, like, part of the reason it kind of bothers me is she said it. she looks at cases more at a practical standpoint. So her issue was the fact that as you hold it, you know, there, you know, those kinds of cases that have the holes on there will continue to, you know, carry grime and whatever that's on it. Mm -hmm. And then when you take it off, you'll have this weird, like, dust emblem that you'll have on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, she, it's, I mean, the design-wise, I think it is kind of very, I, go, I don't know if I could say an Apple or whatever, but it's it's definitely different. I don't know if it's anything to kind of... Maybe it's like, new Apple. Like, I yeah, I don't know if it's kind of a reflection of iOS 7, you know what I mean? Because yeah, it's so iOS weird. 7 is very bubbly, you know, yeah. kind of cartoony, and this really right. kind of shows the... And it's uh, trying to get into that... Contrast of colors, yeah. Right, similar to like how HTC tried to take advantage of like the Windows Phone schemes with their, right. you know, with their, 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 their phones. Windows Phone 8X or... Win yeah, with the 8X, 8X or plus? the... the yeah. yeah, whatever that is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I was just like... I don't okay. name this stuff. Yeah, I'm like, what is you know, that part called? Part of me thinks that this is going to be one of those things that it looks better in person. Yeah, I agree. Than on the picture. That picture yeah. is really not. It's unflattering. You know what I mean? Well, especially some of these color combinations, like this, uh, the red and blue Superman combination thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It doesn't. Yeah, but you could. Something doesn't match, look right. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My question. I mean, it almost is, remind me of like a nursery or something. It's like very My, baby colors. My question is like. How long is it going to take the regular average Joe that buys like the red iPhone to decide which color coordinated case that they want? Like, is Apple going to have cases out there like for you to, you know, mix and match before you leave the Apple store? Because coming from a retail side, that was one of the worst things. Like, okay, you finally decided that you want the black phone. Okay, you want it at this size, and you want the car charger. Great. Now let's get you a case. And for many times. Deciding what case to get takes the longest time, and um, you know it's it's uh, Apple has definitely not made it easier for retail experience. <laughs> um, but you know what? To each their own. Um, I'm sure there are people out there that don't think that this is an ugly choice. There are people that feel that this is gonna make like like Rad, like you and I were just saying. This is the next era of Apple. Would Steve Jobs like it? Maybe not, but he's not here anymore. So moving forward from that, uh, yeah, yeah, moving forward from that, it's you know uh, this this definitely might be a good thing. So that was the iPhone 5C. That was it, and it was. Well, I kinda... guess on on that note, sorry before you move on, do you think if they kept what they've been doing all this time and still keeping it the same, and uh, honestly speaking, I think if they stayed with that with with that uh, design sense that you're talking about, the next iPhone would have been essentially like the HTC One, right? I mean, it's clean lines and it's it's metal. It looks like the MacBook Pros. Um, I don't know. That's what I think it, it would go on to. But do you think that would still... I mean, that would still capture people at this point when people are looking for something new and... No. You know what I mean? I, I think it's... I, I completely agree initially when Tony was saying how, like, 
Apple's not at that point where they're doing into incremental upgrades, and I can see why. Mm-hmm. It's not really about... Like, the hardware was the big piece when it first came out. Like, when the iPhone first came out, they just destroyed everyone, right? Like, it was disruptive for how many years. But now, now that things are kind of settling, it really just comes down to really uh, keeping the fort intact, and that fort is iOS. Like, they don't want to change it too much. Like, their developers are some of the most, like the most dedicated developers. Even, like, if you poll how many... Uh, there was a poll, a straw, ha- uh, a straw poll that was on... Uh, I think it was um, Pocket Now or some other site. But they asked, like, w- uh, what development were you doing before you were doing iOS? 85% of them were PC developers. 85%. Hmm. So it's like, that's huge. And so those people decided to choose to build there first because it was the most profitable, it was the most stable... And it, it brought in the most money. And so to change that would be drastic, you know what I mean? And so the only way to really change the phone and expect more is to make changes to the operating system. You know what I mean? So that that's one of the things. Like, you could ask, like, the Infinis- Xfinity developers on the forums, like, why is, like, the Android, you know, app so shoddy compared to the Windows phone and iOS versions? And they're just like, well, because... We like we like this operating system better versus versus this operating system because it's there's more to support there. So, but yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, I I, I look at it and I go, okay, this is probably the role. Uh, uh, my coworker, who is a huge huge Apple fan, he had an Apple shirt on. Like he's been wanting to see something more, but he was disappointed. And I was like, really, you're surprised? And he goes, yeah, you know, I was expecting more. You know, I have the iPhone five right now, and you know, I want. I want to see something, you know, that really, that really, like, but what could you possibly expect like, from Apple? Yeah, that, that's what point? I mean. It's yeah. like, if, like, staying, staying on the same path, like that, I, I don't know, I, I think, I personally, I, I feel like the, the consumer base is changing, and that this, Shows me like when you know having the the multiple colors like similar to the time with the iPods that they introduced the multiple colors is that they're that you know the the customers want something different like as far as look. Yeah, it's nowadays. funny you see that. You know what you I know mean? Why? You know what it is like in just you know in uh. uh it just seems like to me that, you know, when the iPhone was out, that was kind of like the only dog in town, right? And then mm-hmm. uh, and then when Android came out with version 2, you know, more and more handsets were coming out. Now, consumers have so much choice. I mean, if you were to, like, close your eyes and point somewhere in the, in the store, in the carrier store, it's going to be an Android phone. You know what I mean? Like, it, mm-hmm. that's just kind of where it's at. And it's not because Apple is, like... Like incremental, it's just there's just so many choices now, mm-hmm. and that consumers are faced with that. So I don't think it really has anything to do with so much like oh, could possibly Apple come out with some kind of hologram or print? Like it's still going to be something, you know what I mean? Like if Nokia was an Android phone and they were coming out with the 1020 and it was Android, it's still going to be another phone, you know what I mean? It's just going to have a 41 megapixel camera. I don't know if it would sell better than the Galaxy S4 or whatever. It's just another choice now. So that, that's what I see that's happening. Like, that's what ha- that's how Android came up to be. Like, a- Apple came out, Google saw it, and said, oh, this is a huge threat to our business. Copied the crap out of them and said, here's Android, and then and then that's that's where it stands. And Android's open source. All these, like, manufacturers don't have to pay any cost to make another operating system. They just install it into their phones with no cost. So right. it's a win-win situation. Um but yeah, it's you know we always talk about the power of choice, and uh, that's where it kind of is at. All right. So before we move on, I do have one last question for both of you gentlemen. If you had to choose, which color would you choose? I would choose blue. And Vic? I would probably. I would probably go with white, I guess. Actually, you know, I take <laughs> it back. Is it give it? Is it just for the five C or five S? Five C. Five C. Okay, it's five C blue then. Blue? And you can't get you can't get just normal black, huh? No, 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 no <laughs> it isn't. Black, it's all it's all no just space it's gray. Just it's yeah. like even even though I'm an A's fan, I'm not gonna go green <laughs> or the or not the, the yellow. lime green, right? <laughs> the lime green, yeah. It's very citrusy. Yeah. So you go white, Vic? 
I mean, of of those choices, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd probably I, I, get a I black actually, case for it. I would do green <laughs> with a black case. Not the cheese grater case, but I would I would get a black case. Maybe something from... That would uh, look good. From oh, you would get iPhone's case, right? You would get. I wouldn't get Apple's case. case. No, I'd get yeah. something from our partners over at Cedio or, or I don't know. Yeah, I'll 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 talk, I'll talk to our PR group. Yeah, I right. would decent showing. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and move on to I guess the bigger you know topic of the mm -hmm. evening, which is the iPhone 5S, and uh, S stands for same. No, no. S <laughs> stands for super because this is actually a it's incremental, but it's actually a pretty. Uh, good uh, upgrade. So first of all, we've got um, three colors. We've got space gray, not black, space mm -hmm. gray. Uh, we also have gold, so not champagne, gold, and silver. So those are the three colors. It comes in three capacities, 16, 32, 64. That's all pretty much the same. 200, 300, or 400 with a two-year contract, respectively. In regards to the height, depth, weight, and width of the phone, it's the same to the iPhone 5. Um, difference, we've got the brand new A7 chip with a 64-bit architecture and the coprocessor M7 motion coprocessor. We'll talk about those in a little bit. It's going to be available on four major carriers in the U.S., uh, 200, over 200 carriers worldwide, over 100 countries worldwide. It is. Um, it includes new bands of LTE, so uh, companies like... T-Mobile that just started having LTE, it would be, um, it will be on that network as well. Um, it will still have the same Retina display, same four-inch Retina display, uh, 1163 by 64 pixel resolution, uh, 800 to one contrast ratio. Uh, the so the one of the big things is the camera. So it, it's still an eight megapixel camera, but it has um, has a 1.5 um, was micron Microns. pixels? Yeah, micron pixels. So it basically lets in more light, and then on top of that, the flash. It's dual LED flash. One is going to be a warm color, and the other is going to be what do they call it a cold Ooh. color. Yeah, so it's oh, all yeah. like adjusting. So like, it does auto adjusting for you. Yeah, yeah. Based on the kind of scheme that you have. Right. So like on the lighting that's there. Right. Um. What else is there? What am I missing? Oh, yeah, the Touch ID. So that was pretty cool. So we, we all kind of knew that the iPhone 5S was going to have a fingerprint scanner mm -hmm. on it. And the way that they did it was actually really clean, uh, it, what you would expect from Apple. Like it, mm -hmm. it, It's not like this big fingerprint scanner like you have on, on, on like my PC. It's, just this, uh, it's, it's beautifully integrated into the home button. It's a capacitive screen. And I'm not going to get too technical with it. You can go to uh, YouTube and look at the actual technical uh, drawings of how they actually built the uh, built the i uh, built the uh, Touch ID. But basically, at any angle that you have the iPhone or the I guess the future iPads, um, it'll be able to recognize any finger. Uh, it's not just your thumb. So if you're thumbless, you know you can. So you can have a backup finger. You can have a backup finger. <laughs> yeah. And if they steal yours, they just have to in finger. case. So if someone steals your thumbs, like ah ha, my, my, only my index finger opens up my iPhone. Ah, got. <laughs> um, what else on that one? Oh, one of the big things is that the uh, Touch ID uh, will also allow you to um, do passwords, but at the moment only with the App Store. Um, Apple said that not only is the fingerprint. Um, only stored on the A7 processor. It will never, ever be stored remotely in iCloud. And other developers at the moment cannot use the Touch ID. So, for example, PayPal, uh, which is, you know, payment system, they would do great with something like this or Square, oh, yeah. you know, but they can't use it yet. So, and I understand can you, it. Can you have more than one? Like, like you said that this would most likely be on the iPads, right? Yeah. Like the future iPads. I don't so know does that if it's a more than one person? profiles. No, I don't think it's a no, more than one profile. This is just, and it's not like, because my computer allows me to scan more than one finger, and each finger actually is uh, connected to a different password. So like uh -huh. uh, my thumb is my, my, my lock screen, my Gmail is my index finger, just uh, as an example. I don't think this is that. 
right now at, at the at the birth of of the touch id it's solely for the security of the whole device and for purchasing through the app store whether it's for apps or or you know videos books and other I, uh, other iTunes related um, purchases, um, but the thing I really want to touch on, um, well, I guess the Touch ID. Next, we can talk about the the updated camera. Now, Vic, you kind of went, "Ooh, that's really cool." So we got uh, you know 1.5 mi- um, uh, micron right. pixels. Um, also, mm-hmm. it does slow mo slow motion at 120 frames per second. It's five um, filament lens. You better have it on a tripod. Well, yeah. no, I guess, I guess you okay. It, I mean, the, this, uh, the flash is updated. I mean, Rad, this is a really nice sounding camera. Now, it, yeah. is it is it a no, uh, you know, Nokia uh, 1020? No. It, so maybe the zooming is still going to be a little pixelated compared to, you know, what, what we've yeah. seen. In and it's still going to be blurry. Yeah, but well, compared to than... other... The previous yeah. iPhone. Right. Yeah, it is That's better. exactly so, it. That's exactly And you see good pictures with yeah. previous iPhones. So you do. Oh, yeah. yeah you, only, there are a ton plus. of great. There are yeah. a ton of great YouTube uh, movies shot with the iPhones. Like, oh, yeah. you would never know that. And mm-hmm. so this is this is definitely just going to make it that much better. Mm-hmm. Um, slow. So the slow motion is only in 720p, but hey, it's still you know. HD. That's a, even on even on. Uh, what do you call it? Some of the the Canon SLRs. It's like that too. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping um, that I would see a little bit more in the camera because I wouldn't actually mind buying that phone. I wouldn't mind buying a 5S. Mm-hmm. Like if it were like that, I would actually. I was expecting to. I wouldn't. You, I was at that thought point. Like if Apple really did something cool with their camera, I wouldn't have to get like a 1020. I can go after. I could go after the 5S. That's how I was thinking. I, I have no loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's one of those things where I, I just. Uh, um, I, I was hoping, man, I want to see them really blow it off in the camera. And I was like, oh, this is close. It's close. See more. Yeah, it's close. It's, it's definitely close. I don't know. I, I was, I, I don't know if a physical shutter would do it. I, I or somehow do an optical zoom instead of yeah. relying on digital zoom. Like, like Apple isn't. I mean, they're known for having high quality cameras. Probably uh, for a long time, the one of the best smartphone cameras, you know, in the, in the business. But now. You know, now that we're seeing um, cameras with uh, uh, with um, image stabilization, this doesn't seem to have it. Rocks, um, or does it? I'm not sure. No, it has. Oh. It has some. You know, oh, it's like it's a, yeah, it's a it's digital not, kind. It's not like the real one that yeah. LG's it's not the one that like that 1020 has. Right. So, so it's still going to be a little shaky, on, you know, depending yeah. on what kind of video that you're to. So yeah, get a tripod. Yeah. Um, but you know, for, for see launch it. I was hoping to see like a, a a way to launch it quicker, you know, the camera, because I oh. use my smartphone that way so, all the time. So, but launch, you can't you launch it from the lock screen? Yeah, you can. But like, if it's in my pocket, I can't do it. Like, uh, a very good, funny example was there was at, uh, I was actually at the. Cable Car Museum, a DeLorean passes by. Mm-hmm. But an Android, an iPhone, and me were trying to get our phones out and shoot. I already had my hand in my phone, and I, like, I knew where the camera button was, and as soon as I held it down, it was ready for a shot. And I got, oh, okay. and I was able to shoot it. And everyone was like, damn it! <laughs> um, do you have a physical camera button on your phone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, All the Windows phones have uh, camera buttons. So it was like a, that's like an advantage to me because I could just run and I always use it for the kids even though I don't share it enough on Facebook or whatever or Instagram I use it a lot. It's funny with so many uh, f- uh, people using um, smartphones for their photography from amateur to even semi professional, the physical button is is frowned upon in des- in terms of design. I don't that's know. So this, funny. It, this this little nub protruding on the side of your phone just looks ugly. Like I had I had the physical uh, button for my Motorola Moto X, I think it was the Droid X, uh-huh. and I might have even with that button, I very rarely used it. I just got so used to actually tapping the screen because I, you I, never had to launch it from nothing. So that's the difference between Android and Windows Phone is that you can't hold that button down to launch from anywhere. From a lock screen to shooting. Oh, I see what you mean. 
Okay. So that's the biggest difference, and that's one thing. If Android had that, I would have bought the Android. So you don't have a passcode on your phone? Because I, I assume, it, like, it, you, if you have a passcode, passcode, what happens is when you hold down the the camera shot, you take the picture, but you okay. can't unlock it. Okay. So you'll see the picture, but you'll see a lock on the screen. So to actually go back and see other pictures, you have to unlock it. I would think that if you could hold down like one of the volume rockers on the That's iPhone. what I was hoping. Yeah. Yeah. I would ho- I was hoping that you'd hold both the buttons Wait, down. Can, Maybe can't you, you um can. activate the camera from the lock screen on the S4. No, you, you you can, Vic, but what what Rad is saying, but being able to do it without even touching the screen. Yeah, without touching anything. You should uh, you can hold down the button and I could pull it out of my phone and then take that shot right at that very moment. Yeah, like holding it's literally down the one second. Rocker. And then, like, an Android guy was next to me, and an iPhone guy was next to me, and then we literally pulled out, my phone came out literally in one second and took the shot. And they were like, oh, my God, that was so fast. And then I was just like, <laughs> I just like, I literally like went like this, and I walked away. And so, then I was like, look, son, look at the shot I made. He goes, oh, how awesome, Dad. And that was it. So sidebar, was it the cool DeLorean or was it stock? It was actually the DeLorean with everything. Oh wow! Actually had, yeah, it had, and it was Send sponsored me that by photo G. When you're done, yeah, like, and they go, "Who did that?" And then uh, I was showing my friend, and I was like, "I zoomed," and I go, "I didn't realize it could zoom that well." And then it's a GE sponsored by blah blah blah, oh, and it was wow. fully decked out and like the flux capacitor. But, anyway, <laughs> but yeah, that's very cool. Okay, so the next thing, um, a 64-bit processing chip. Rad, you know more about. Uh, SOCs and processors and microchips than I do on any given day. Um, I just know that a 32-bit you know processor at at the time or up until now has probably been the fastest. And all we really need, and then you know we add more cores mm-hmm. um, for the you know for the device to have more focus on battery life or mm-hmm. this or that. Now with 64-bit. I just hear gaming, and yeah. I just, I, I, in my head, I just much that. better gaming. But aside yeah. from that, what else? What else would a six would sixty four bit do for the for the average consumer? Do you think? Not much, to be perfectly honest. Not much because there really isn't apps that are going to take more advantage than two gigabytes of RAM. And okay. so, and the thing too is in sixty four get in sixty four bit mode, like. It just means that you could take advantage of RAM all the way up to 32 gigabytes. Now you're not going to see a 32 gigabyte RAM-based smartphone, but it's right. obvious that that Apple is already like trying to transition these iOS guys into 64-bit while the RAM is still low. And over time, you know, as you know, iPhone incrementally adds more RAM, it'll be already 64-bit. So last and it'll week, be a seamless Gal- transition. So last week the Galaxy Note 3 was announced and it has 3 gigs of RAM. So what does that mean compared to 64-bit of a, of Nothing. a processor? Nothing. Nothing. So for everything between 60... Okay, 32-bit gives you up to 60 byte, gigabytes of RAM, and this is across the board for irregardless of any operating system or anything like that. It has everything to do with memory address. And, you know, Leo and I, we were talking about it. He goes, what's the reason for 64-bit? And he was like, you know, it's really just the address thing. And then, like... Two of us, two of them were doing research on it, and we were like, "Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a whole, uh, it's a, it's a whole taking advantage of larger RAM because you're doing 64-bit chunks versus 32." It, it's, is it more like being able to do more things at once? Yeah, it's than... more like threading, right? So like the yeah. more, like it's like when you're trying to send like a bunch of things, your app's gonna do instead of sending like 32 things at the same time, it's 64. But mm-hmm. the that requires more RAM, right? It's like like when I use Chrome or Firefox, it's 32, so it maxes out like at 12 or 16 gigabytes. But if I, or at I would say 8 gigabytes, which you're not really going to use even three or four, you know what I mean? But on a 64 gigabyte like Internet Explorer, which almost nobody uses, or a third of the world or whatever, it's like it could use all that memory address, but for what reason? You know what I mean? So it's the whole thing really. It's just forward thinking, so that when iOS moves to this new Architecture, it's like, oh, okay, we all, all of a sudden there's more RAM and we don't have well, to do a thing. We went through that transition with like the laptops and desktops, like yep. a few years ago, right? Yep. So, yep. Or you're talking about the whole switch to Intel. Well, the or, si- 32 to 64 bit. Yeah, it's a big deal, thing. right? So like when you switch on on the on the desktop level, it's a big deal because you know memory address is a big deal, right? So if you 
you know, as a programmer, you're going to try to take advantage of whatever the machine gives you. But if you're running in 32-bit mode, you could you only have certain amount of memory that you're allowed to touch. That's just the way it is. Because 32, it's, it's hard to explain, but all I can say is that you have you work with less memory, even if there's more. You work with, uh, you talk with less applications, even though there's more. So, well, like, I, I guess on the, the being a, a Mac owner during the, the time that, like, say, the Macs were transitioning from 32 to 64-bit, mm -hmm. it was pretty, like, seamless, as far as I remember. I don't mm -hmm. remember having to, like, remember, okay, I'm going to use this program, right. that program 64-bit, right. so I can't run it on this. Right, right. But, but if I remember right, for Windows 7, they had a 32-bit and a 64-bit version that you had to choose from when you were buying the operating system, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think um, whether have... if there was some kind of confusion back then for that, do you think that's going to cause any problems with with Honest. iOS, yeah, no, it won't because they're already they're already thinking ahead. They're gonna put 64 bit in first, right. and then hit the four gigabyte limit later on. You know what I mean? So it's like like 32 is you know I, I made a mistake saying it's it's actually four gigabytes. That's the max you could get at 32 on 32 bit. So once you get past four gigabytes, you can't on 32 bit systems. Mm -hmm. You just can't. So but when you have 64 in and you already have just two gigabytes of RAM, and you know all of these iOS developers are now going to take advantage of 64-bit. I mean, there's some changes you have to do architecturally on your programs, but but once it's done and everyone transitions to this new system, it's like you know it's as if nothing happens when the new iPhone comes out. It's not like everyone's apps break. It's so seamless to the consumer. Yeah, to the consumer, it's like it doesn't matter. They're going to look at it and say, oh, you know, there's no 64-bit version or 32 version. You just get the app. Right. So, yeah. Well, I can tell you one thing. The A7 chip isn't monitoring um, the accelerometer, gyroscopes, or compass. That is being monitored by the coprocessor called the M7. This is kind of a, I don't know if you can call it a first of its kind, but it's definitely first of its kind from Apple. Mm -hmm. And so, again, to you, Rad, I, I tip the hat to you as a, uh, as you know more about this stuff, but I mean, having a separate processor to monitor all the different sensors mm -hmm. uh, would, you know, you would have increased battery life uh, for for oh, one absolutely. thing. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this opens the floodgates to the possibility of uh, of Apple creating their own iWatch? I mean, this this kind of like, yeah, is, is there any possible. possibility with that? Like, th they would prove that the M7 is a viable option. That it's not a battery sucker, and it's like, okay, this is good. And now we put that M7 chip in this little watch that goes in your brain or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. So it's like a good example of this is uh, the Nintendo Wii, right? The the Wii. The reason why I bring that is because the Wii used a single chip to manage all of its processing as well as you know, the controls and its gyroscope and accelerometer all in one chip. They separated that chip when we when the when the Wii Motion Plus came out, and so Apple is doing the same thing here with the M7. With the M7, I'm assuming that the sensitivity is going to be so great, it's going to be more one-to-one. -one. This is probably going to help improve, like, you know, gaming, like, especially when you start doing, you know, tilting for, you know, your racing games or when you're doing walking. It's also possible for it to even run while it's, you know, at sleep. You know, there's all kinds of things that you could do when the chips are a little bit separated. It's the same reason why, like, um, uh, games work better or... Um, <laughs> Processors work better when the graphics are offloaded from the CPU and they're, they're going into a graphics card versus the CPU trying to do everything, right? So Which is this what is, the pieces used to do. This is the first time that they've separated? Uh, from my understanding, yeah. That Apple's yeah. done it. Motorola yeah. did it with their kind of 8x processor mm -hmm. where each core separately managed different uh, variables that, that the phone had to deal with. But this is, from Apple's standpoint, this is specifically for, like, different sensors and mostly motion. So, mm -hmm. well, so It's all about health tracking capabilities, right? So, oh, yeah. So, well, like, the, the, they announced their the Nike Plus Move app would be, you know, integrated or, I guess, compatible with right. the... Uh, with this M7 integration in the new uh, iPhone 5S. So you have to have an iPhone 5S to fully take advantage 
of the M7, obviously, but, um, you know, should you have that app, um, you're going to get a lot more out of it, whereas somebody with even the iPhone 5C wouldn't. Um, it's funny how they, well, well like, they're, they're uh, not, not benchmark, but the up to 40% fa- a faster CPU than the original, original iPhone. Original iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, it's, I, I, I know it's funny you say too. that. You know why? Because... <laughs> It's, Apple has been all about just really hardware, never about specs, and all of a sudden they're now talking about specs, which is so but weird. But then they're comparing it to the original, original iPhone. Because yeah. <laughs> like, if I were to compare something to the original MacBook, you know, like, right. or well, the original yeah, Android phone, or the original Android phone, anything yeah. better than that. I mean, it, yeah. it kind of, I mean, they, that brings up again the word, the incremental. Yeah. Update, so. Right, it's like the whole thing, like, you you always wonder why they mention the contract price, but they never mention the off-contract off price, contract. right? Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's deliberate. Yeah. You know, they thought of everything whenever, like, unlike Microsoft marketing, where they don't think about what people might say if they say that, Apple mm-hmm. thinks of every little thing. They said, you know what, let's just not say it. That's just them. So, you know, but for us, where we, like, analyze everything... You know, we're just like, oh, this is why they did not want to bring it up. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what we do. Yep. Now, another thing regarding the iPhone 5C, they also kind of quietly announced um, new cases for the iPhone 5C. Uh, one is the exclusive limited edition Red, which would be $50, and it's the Red case. Um, the other ones are, um, I guess they're leathery cases. I, I'm not sure exactly what colors they are, but they're leather cases, and they're for 40 bucks or 39 bucks. So uh, no, uh, no, no Swiss cheese Connect 4e look. Uh, definitely a lot more executive kind of uh, kind of look to them. I just don't know how they feel. So definitely uh, in a couple of I guess in a couple of weeks, less than a couple of weeks, we'll we'll find ex- exactly how it feels in the palm of one's hand. But um, oh, so that one like in the shot that I have up. Yeah. These this little. Uh, Ridge around the camera might help, like as far as getting rid of the lens flares and stuff. That's what a lot of people were wondering. I, you know, that the the lens flare, the the the, the weird purple hue that showed yeah. up. Yeah. Vice versa, it might affect the flash too. But yes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if, if something like that does occur, all you have to do is take the case off and it, and take the picture because that's a lot more, you know. Convenient. Yeah, or you could like file it down. <laughs> you can do it somewhere. <laughs> Any of those options are kind of or more. Or you could than, tape than a than little diffuser to it. <laughs> <laughs> Put your diffuser on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like bigger than the phone. <laughs> hey, yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do to get the shot. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> hey, that fills the whole room right there. <laughs> so. Um, that, the iPhone 5S, um, same question that I had for you guys on the 5 What Which color would you choose on this one? The space gray. Yeah, same here. I like could this. make the Austin Powers joke and say, gold. <laughs> no. <but> no. <laughs> I like gold. You know, I'm, you know, I'm most likely, I'm probably going to get a case for it, so yeah, I'd say silver for me. Mm-hmm. Because the gold, all you see, the gold is on the side and the back, and then, gold. I mean, is is there any, <laughs> is there any gold around the? Uh, there, there's a little bit of gold around the uh, home button, right? So that would really yeah. be it from the front. Because I remember um, listening to one of the other podcasts, they were saying that if you have a naked phone, like some people do, like Rad, where you know you, you're uh, very. Uh, you know, you, you you feel that you're uh, very responsible with your phone. You're not going to drop it on the ground like I do. Uh, you don't have a case, so the the gold would uh, probably be best um, to show off the back of your phone when you're using the phone as a you know, because people can see the gold. But otherwise, when when are people actually ever going to see the gold? Seriously. <laughs> so. Sorry, Red just sent me a. The uh, Austin <laughs> Powers thing? Yeah. yeah. I saw that too. I wish we had Sean set up so we could we could, we we could do this. I was trying to put the YouTube thing on here and it's like cutting off the resolution. The, how the hell do we add this thing? 
Rad, believe me, I've tried many times to get, <laughs> to, to get the uh, YouTube working on Google Plus Hangouts, and it just does not want to work. Um, <laughs> so that was the, the, the announcement of the iPhone 5S. Now, uh, regarding the f two phones, pre-order for the iPhone 5C starts on the 13th, and those prices are, as we said before, uh, $100 to $200 respectively. Uh, but there is no pre-order for the iPhone 5S. So do you think that that's just Apple saying that they want the hype again? They want the, they want the lines out the door? They want people to start lining up right now? Because if yeah. there's a pre-order, then there's no real necessity for a line. Um, because in my case, a lot of people that pre-order phones sometimes even get the phone before the actual launch date. But now that they don't, they don't have a pre-order for the more executive of the, of the two uh, devices, you got to wait. Mm -hmm. So it's a good marketing well, point, you know? Do you think there's going to be more demand for the, for the C, the 5C, on launch day? I think there's going to be demand in, in China, which they don't have anything there. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, they're really going after these markets where they're not there. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. You forget they have an announcement in China tomorrow. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they have an announcement in China tomorrow about with uh, supposedly with a Qualcomm processor. Mm -hmm. That so they'll talk about like China Mobile and all that because I know uh, Sarah was saying that we were expecting an announcement that they're going to be in China with China Mobile. We didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. I think they're waiting for that tomorrow. Um, one of the other deal. big announcements is the iPhone 5S and the 5C are going to be available in NTT Docomo in Japan, yep. which is big, which is huge. Yep. It's basically yep. saying, you know, that... They're ready to go worldwide, worldwide. Just now. imagine if the iPhone was never available on at and It's like, yeah. what? Yeah, that's how it is in Japan for NTT Docomo. So yeah. that's crazy. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, there's, there's, there's uh, no pre-order on that. Um, for the rest of y'all that just don't want to spend the money on all these phones, but you do want to get like a new iPhone newer than the iPhone 4, you can get the iPhone 4S, 8 gigabytes for free. And they didn't specify which carriers would be selling that, but I can only assume, at least in the United States, all of them, all, all, of them. The, all the major carriers. All of them will have it. Um, and then with regards to... Uh, um, iOS 7, uh, the upgrade to iOS 7 is September 18th, uh, which is also when iTunes Radio will be available for free with ads or ad-free with iTunes Match uh, on the annual cost of $25 a year. Oh, so you need to have iTunes Match to... To get no ads. To get radio. Oh, no ads. No, okay. No ads. I gotcha. Yeah, if you don't mind ads, then it's free. Um, which I kind of and you have to have iOS seven, right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. iTunes Radio is part of iOS seven. Now, with regards to I, uh, iOS seven, um, this was a really big who uh, you know hooray uh, because iOS seven will be available for iPhone four or later, iPad two or later, uh, or in iPad Mini or fifth gen iPod touches. Mm -hmm. So that was huge because I mean I, I know a lot of people with the iPad 2, They're thinking, oh, we're gonna be, you know, Fixed our, up. yeah, because our, our devices are definitely a lot slower than the newer iPad, but they're not. That, so that's, I don't necessarily awesome. know that. I mean, that that is awesome, but do you think the the newer process or the newer operating system is gonna run slower because it it, it because it can do so much more? Uh, you know, it, 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 I don't like, think they would let it if <laughs> if yeah. that was the case. Yeah, I don't they're know. Very, yeah. They're very good quality control. I don't Apple know, because I mean, honestly iOS, speaking, uh, when iOS five came out and it was available for some of the older iDevices, it was slow on the older iDevice. Like people were saying, don't even bother upgrading. It makes the uh, makes the device. Yeah, so slow. I think Apple learned their lesson on that. I'm very sure okay. they know right. about that. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that was Apple. Um, I don't even know. I, I wish there was some sort of counter to let us know how long we've been talking about this. But so I mean, let's just an hour and a half. All right. Well, let's just <laughs> let's just finalize with uh, with a couple of Apple related announcements. Now, the um, I closed my window, but um, Apple also announced with the help of Chair that Infinity Blade Three would avail would be available at launch. Um, so that's September 20th, and it will be available for, I think, all i, I devices, iOS devices, 
And I don't know, oh, Rad, sorry. did they say the did they say price for Infinity Blade, Rad? Uh, not that I know of. Okay, well, what it's been seven dollars in the past, right? For yeah. Infinity Blade. Mm-hmm. One of the big upsets was Infinity Blade Dungeons. Was it was supposed to be yeah. out last time and it never, yeah, never showed up. Never showed up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, in um, uh, was it? Hopefully, chair, you know, actually says yes. We're doing this. Yeah, we're not gonna. Awesome you know, man. It's such an awesome series. Yeah. Um, and then also iWorks is going to be free for any new purchases of iOS device. So that includes iWork, iMovie, iPhoto, so that's all uh, Keynote, Pages, and Numbers. No GarageBand, but any uh, iOS 7 compatible devices that were activated after September 1st. So that's great. So even if you buy a device tomorrow, the iPhone 5, for whatever reason, if you can't just wait a week, if you buy an iPhone 5 tomorrow, and you are, or I guess the new iPad or whatever, um, and you download iOS 7 in two weeks, you'd be able to get these apps for free. And that saves you between, you know, 40 to $50, which is a huge savings. Uh, Vic and I were kind of contemplating that this was Apple's move against Google and Google Drive. Um, and then some other, you know, I, I know... Uh, you know, Microsoft Windows or Microsoft Office 365 is also now available, but you have to have the, the annual subscription to take full mm-hmm. advantage of that. So this is Apple saying you don't have to pay anything. You just got to buy a new device from us. Mm-hmm. Good move. Definitely, yeah. definitely. It's a great move. move. Well, it was the selling point for Macs in a while, so, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, for a while. So, yeah, it's... Add more value. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right, well, last thing on iOS, I tried out Jarvis. I had my own Jarvis uh, <laughs> earlier today, Yeah. and it's boring. What would you think? It was sort of like... It's stupid. Mm. I don't know. Like, mm. I think if I had it connected with the, the Blu-ray, I think I'd get a lot more out of it because it is, it is a second screen yeah. um, experience, but just using it standalone and doing the voice command. Jarvis, weather... Today's yeah. weather is like, yeah. uh, yeah, that's I, it. You know, it's really, I mean, there's a zillion apps it's a that are like thing, that. You know? Exactly. Yeah, it, that's all it was. I think so. Was it? Was it free? Yeah. So yeah. you know, I just yeah. wasted ten <laughs> minutes of my life trying it out. But you know, well, what what else would I have been doing during that time? Just watching anime. So not a big read deal. Read a book. I don't read. Um, <laughs> I use Audible.com. No. Um, no, I do. But uh, yeah, there's there really wasn't a, a whole lot of hubbub in the, in the tech world regarding to mobile. Um, a couple of cool apps on uh, Windows Phone 8. Um, uh, the Nexus 7 with LTE is now available on the Google Play Store. So if you want LTE on your Nexus 7, it's 350 bucks. Uh, so 150 or you know over 100 dollars more for it. But hey, if you LTE bands definitely can help you out instead of having to search for that Wi-Fi. And that is it. Um, unfortunately, uh, that is going to be it for Sean Wilburn for the rest of the week as well, as he is going to be out of town uh, for the Lords of Gaming podcast as well as his very own what? Um, uh, LTG radio. So unfortunately, you'll uh, won't ha- you won't hear the sweet sounds of Wilburn for a while. But you can download his music from iTunes and other. Uh, streaming radio options. Uh, with regard to the rest of the group, you can uh, find us at lazytechguys.com or call us at 707-722-5299. Uh, we're on all the major social networks, including Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Feed, App.net. I mean, we're pretty much on anything and everything that matters. Uh, notice not in my space. Um, Rad, how would uh, the fine people out there in the ether find out more about the Castro of Radness? <laughs> you find me at uh, about.me slash radcastro all my stuff is in there Twitter you name it Facebook so right. yep, check me out there okay Victor and well Rad would be like I haven't heard that one before you can reach me at <laughs> Victor <laughs> okay, we're, okay. Whatever. there's somewhere <laughs> All right. It pretty much the same thing with me. You could find me at LTG Tony on Twitter, um, or just go to about dot, about dot me slash Teen Ninja three thousand, and all of my links are there. So, gentlemen, thank you again very much for joining me this evening. Um, 
Loved your insight. Loved what you had to talk about. And uh, we'll be back with uh, Lloyd's Gaming this Friday and the LTG show on Monday. So guys out there, be safe, take care, and we'll, we'll see you soon.